Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the ASI. This is their part number U135EA. This is a hands-free soap dispenser. It's obviously, an, not obviously, but it's an automatic soap dispenser. This is the U135EA from AJW. A very simple, all but trouble-free, trouble-free, all but maintenance-free, very um, robust, dependable, reliable automatic soap dispenser. Okay, Automatic soap is nice, uh, dispensers are nice because they really prevent the hands from touching valves, transmission of, you know, your hands are clean when you're done, but boy, that the face of that valve is probably filthy because every hand that touches it is not clean. <laughs> so enter automatic soap dispensers. Uh, that's the box that it comes in, not a real special box. But um, let's take a closer look. This is a hands-free liquid soap dispenser, surface mount. That window up front is going to show you the condition or the amount of soap that you have installed. I'm familiar with this model. Stainless steel face, 22 gauge with a satin finish. Refill indicator displays remaining product. Hands-free electric sensor provides easy installation. That's going to be or easy operation and 34 ounce capacity and 34 ounce capacity is the larger of the two common capacities you're about 16 and then about 34 you know something in that range there are oddball soap dispensers that carry less and those that carry more but this is would be considered the larger of the two common units now there is there are general specifications down below uh, that portion of the extended description which we'll get to before we get to the installation instructions and the template, there is a link below this video to the product brochure, which is handy because it will allow you to go over the um, soap dispensers from AJW uh, and the U135, the automatic is there. There's also a U134EA um, and the difference primarily is the housing. The U134 is a uh, impact uh, resistant housing, less decorative. You know, you might install this into a restaurant. The U134, you might just put it somewhere where, you know, I don't need to pay for the stainless wrap. I need an automatic soap dispenser, maybe over a sink in a uh, healthcare environment sort of thing. Less expensive models that are there. Vanity mount uh, are there. The U128, the U129 series, recessed models translucent models that are going to be considered inexpensive. You've got literally the vanity mounted soap dispensers that when you're at a vanity you've got the faucet but then off to the side you've got your uh, item that otherwise looks like a faucet but it's your soap dispenser. The U126, the U125, the U124 those are very typical and common stainless um, vessels that simply are surface mounted. Then the U120 shelf mount that's nice as well um, I see those in, in airports. Uh, sink, keys, phone, whatever, do your business, you're done. So there is then a link to a document called Tech Sheet, and that's going to give you the dimensional properties of the item along with uh, specification information. Let's check the dimensional properties. 10 and 5 eighths is the overall height. That is indeed the case. Overall width is four and three quarter. Bit shy on that. They might be going, oh, you know what they're doing? The lid is a bit greater than the body and that's where that four and five eighths or four and three quarter will come in. They've got a projection of four and one eighth. Yeah, I'm not, you know, based on the angle of the camera, I'd say that that would be accurate. Now, the specifications down below give you details in terms of the item. I won't beleaguer those um, points that are there. Installation is there. If mounting on a wall surface, transfer mounting hole dimensions uh, to the surface of the wall. We will get to that now and next, except um, in the installation instructions. But first, the preventative maintenance is crucial. Um, preventative maintenance is the difference from this being disposable and th being thrown away because it no longer works to it working for years and years. And the bottom line is each dispenser should be flushed out approximately every 30 days or with every soap change with warm water to prevent 
the valve from clogging with old soap. Do not use abrasive cleaners to clean the dispenser. Flush the vessel out completely with warm water. If you don't, the soap will coagulate and it will block, clog, otherwise render inoperative the valve and the transfer uh, conduit, so to speak, um, that the soap needs to move through. And I have had people that do proper preventative maintenance and they literally last years and years. So be mindful of that. You want to take good care of this once you get your hands on it. So then there's a link below this video to the installation instructions and they're included with the item here. And up at the top we see specifications. It's basically going to um, give you all of the details. Uh, the, what I'd like to point out is that you're going to need four AA batteries, 1.5 volts, so it's obviously running on 6 volts. I don't see anything else that's important other than to point out they say that the estimated battery life is about 35,000 cycles, which could very typically be one year. Auto detecting sensing difference in step two down below. Um, we've had people that call and say, you know, there's, there's this, I think the valve has a leak. Um, there's always a pool of soap below the valve. We put a dish there to collect the soap. And I says, well, the valve probably shouldn't leak. And then we talk more about it. And what it usually is is a discussion of, what model do you have? Okay, it's automatic. Okay, so now I know we're dealing with um, most likely a ghosting scenario where it's been placed too close to the vanity or it's got highly reflective surfaces all around it. And they're saying that in step two that you need to be at least seven and seven eighths above what is a normal countertop. If it's a highly reflective surface, you could certainly have ghosting occurring. So you want to put this in a place where if you do have any dripping that comes down, it's obviously going to not collect on your vanity, but you need to position it properly. Okay, So that's, that's important. We do bump into that. Installation, uh, two things. You're going to get a template with this. Um, that's for securing it to a wall mechanically. And with that template, you're also going to get four screws and four plastic anchors to get you started. Will that be what you're going to use to install it? Maybe, maybe not. Also a key, and we're going to use that just in a moment. But first, um, regarding the installation, mechanically or adhesively, they also give you a couple of pieces of two-sided tape. Uh, you're going to use the two-sided tape if you've got a mirror application. Um, down at the bottom of page one, clean the mounting surface in area to be installed with isopropyl alcohol. Um, okay, interestingly that isopropyl alcohol wipe is not included. Um, I would have expected that it would have been. So you'll need to clean that surface thoroughly. I would clean the back of the unit as well. Mark outline of dispenser on mirror with masking tape. Remove paper liners from self-adhesive pads on dispenser back plate. Place unit on mounting surface with even steady pressure and hold for one minute. Let tape cure for 10 hours before you're filling it with soap. So obviously these pieces are going to go on the back of this clean surface. Once you've got it marked off, pull that tape off. And when you're ready to roll, push it down and hold it for a minute. Don't fill it for 10 hours. Now mechanically fastening it, uh, tape the installation template at the appropriate location on the mounting surface. Drill four holes at marked locations, 5 16 diameter. So be mindful that you've got these two keyholes here that are going to line up here. And as I'm looking at this, it doesn't. It does not line up exactly with the top of the unit because you will drill those holes in the center and then you're going to lose 3 eighths of an inch when you bring it down. So be mindful that where you're going to locate that template, there is going to be a minor adjustment. Okay, um, And it's going to be obviously the difference between the center of the hole where you drill and the top of where the screw will ultimately reside. I'm eyeballing that at about 3 eighths. And that, is, that does account for why the top of this 
template does not match the center line of the hole. So be mindful of that. You might take your time and lay it out and then say, oh, it's three eighths low. So be mindful of that. You might, you'll might you need to adjust. Um, mark your four, four holes, drill your five sixteenths, insert the plastic anchors into the drilled holes, then remove your template. Insert the two anchors into the top plastic and leave an eighth of an inch space from the underside of the head of the screw to the to the dispenser. That's because you're going to get the head of the screw inside of here, then drop it down, and that will lock it in. Um, use key to unlock and pull forward the housing cover. Let's do that now. This is called a tubular key, or known as an ACE key. The Chicago Lock Company, I believe... I'm sure, and I know that they invented this style of key called tubular. They're, they called it the ACE key. If you call, if you knew it as an ACE key, that meant it was a tubular key by the Chicago Lock Company. And they were, you know, I don't know the history of the Chicago Lock Company, but they were bought out by someone who bought out by someone. Now, ultimately, that company is, um, and now we're, we're talking the 1920s and 30s. Ultimately, now, the same technology is owned by Compex, who can do tubular locks and you'll see tubular locks in very commonly in vending machine applications and coin operated laundry uh, mat type applications um, you know the principle on how this key works is really identical to um, other typical locks they do take pin tumblers and the way a key works is removing the blockage and those pins are stacked in such a way that when you insert the key, it removes them as being a blockage, and then you can operate the unit. And just not to get too far askew here, but you can see that there are some cuts, some gold-colored cuts. That one looks so deep. That one's not, not as deep. Okay? That one looks maybe the same depth. And you've got something there. A very small cut, very, very small cut here. That's called the nib. And that's what's going to go into the prep in the cylinder face for the nib. Um, the depth of those cuts is directly related to the length of the pins and how far they need to be pushed in to create the shear line to operate that cylinder. Um, very interesting subset of lock sets, these tubular locks. I've even seen drawings uh, that are 100 years old that show how they can be master keyed. So very interesting. Anyway, doesn't really matter. This is a lock you're going to rotate that to unlock it. And what's nice about this model is that it's key retaining. You cannot remove the key while you are in the unlocked position because of the nib. That will come down. You're good to go. You've got locked and unlocked that you can see there. That prep on the at the 9 o'clock position is where the nib is inserted. And until I bring the... Well, I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to close the unit. I can definitely turn it and then pull the key out. I don't have to lock it, but it is key retaining um, until it's brought back to that position. Now that's the business end of this of this guy. So your holes are up here, which you won't need to get access to, but the other holes, since we're talking about installation, There is an interesting um, modification to this unit compared to others. There is this spring-loaded gate that will then allow you to remove the reservoir, and then you're going to get access to those final two installation holes. Okay, That back here is the electronics, which is buried inside of this unit. Your, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Remove key pull forward the housing, remove the soap reservoir, and, and lock dispenser and lock dispenser two wall with the remaining two screws through the holes in the back plate, tighten all screws. Great. Now you're done. Now you're physically attached. Page two are the operation instructions. Um, open the housing with the key, which we already have done. Remove the cover on battery compartment. I'm looking at it upside down. Okay, so this is the battery compartment. You're just going to pinch that. That will open. 
That's of course where your four double A's are going to go. That's not that 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 does come out. Okay, you can remove it from that nine volt typical connector. Place that back in there with your battery. Snap that shut. Okay. Four four double A's. Reinstall the battery box and close the compartment cover. Obtain a disposable soap cartridge, 800 milliliter, or remove, clean, uh, clean out and refill the included uh, reusable soap reservoir. So you can buy a product called soap, uh, you know, soap in a bag or, or something. There's some name like that um, where you, you need to connect your unit to that soap or you're just going to clean this and then fill this, okay? And that's when you're going to clean this out thoroughly with warm water. You'll want to flush everything. That tip's got to come off. Okay. That will unscrew. Warm water, clean it. No abrasives. No abrasives at all. Um, I have had people tell me that their stainless steel and their accessories was defective. We've sold them accessories, and it's, it's rusting. It's all rusting. Um, after a year or two. Well, generally what happens in that regard is it is it, always what happens in that regard is that it is ultimately determined the pH level of the soap that's being run through the, the, the dispenser and making contact with all the stainless material that it's connected to um, is outside of the engineered range and is known to be caustic with, the, with stainless steel. So be mindful, there is documentation um, available from the factory that if you're concerned about the pH level of the soap you're running through it, you know, then, then definitely confirm that first. Um, they didn't tell us to remove the housing the, the nozzle flange, make sure the nozzle flange is below the housing cradle. Well, anyway, here's that gate. Sorry. That's a lift it up and lock it in scenario. Okay. So you've now got that cleaned and then filled. You're going to place that in there, and you're going to, what they're saying is you're going to stretch that. You're going to stretch that so that it fits inside of there. So the valve nozzle needs to be stretched and below that area so that it rests like that. Secured, gate back up and in secured position. Close the housing cover and lock it with the included security key. Okay. Now, you've got... Um, Take a closer look at this. This is a slightly different version than, a, than a, another manufacturer, so I had to study this. The next thing you do after you've got ba batteries in, soap in, closed, locked, observe that the LED light is blue and then flashes four times. That indicates that the environment has been detected. And if there's no object under the dis uh, dispenser, the default sensing distance is 8 to 10 centimeters. If there's an object, such as a basin or a counter, under the dispenser, the, the sensor will detect the installation height and environment light to set a suitable sensing distance automatically. Okay, so the LED is actually right here. There is no hole, there is no hole in the face of the unit to see the LED, but in the back of the housing, they've got that plastic prism, so to speak, that's going to allow the transfer of that LED to light up here. Okay. So if blue flashing four times is a good sign. Um, there are other less good signs through that LED. We'll get to that in a moment. 
Important notice, ensure no bright source is aimed or reflected at the sensor from below. Use fresh new liquid soap only and clean the soap container properly before each refill. Deposits of old soap will lead to malfunction and jamming. Do not dilute the soap at all uh, unless concentrated soap is what you're using. And do not use soap containing abrasives, um, you know, pumice, abrasive soaps that a mechanic shop would use to get heavy grease off. That's not going to work in here. Um, the dispenser should be, should the dispenser be out of order and the batteries have been replaced, do not attempt any repair work. Call a dealer like us. Battery low indication. With housing cover open and soap reservoir removed, perform the following diagnostic test. P press and push up the cover safety interlock switch, blue stem on the bottom, and hold it. That's this right here. Makes a small click. Observe the LED is lit blue and then flashes four times, indicating proper function, and that it's in a standby level. If LED continues to flash blue, the indication is positive to replace the batteries. Four times is good. Continually replace the batteries. Then there is a schematic down below um, showing how the batteries are to be installed. They are installed in series, which means you've got to have them at the right polarity. You know, you've got to have you know your positive to your positive, your negative to your negative in your terminals. Negative is the spring end. And then a diagram down below showing the individual parts. I am not aware of a availability of individual parts for this. We can probably buy the key, would be my guess. I'll ask the manufacturer if the key is available as a standalone product, and if it is, I'll get it added. But I don't think that any of these other parts are going to be available from them. The bottom line is they're importing the entire unit from overseas, and they're not in importing the individual parts, would be my guess. Finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the AJW products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Any questions on the AJW, this is their part number U135EA, Automatic Soap Dispenser, or any other AJW product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.